What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at Arsenal versus Liverpool in their first leg of the Carabao Cup. Before we get into the video, check out both my books. They're online on Amazon and there's links in the description below. Also, be sure to check out Keyframe. That's how I'm making this video. There's links to all that in the description below. And let's get right into the tactics behind the match. So we're specifically going to focus on when Arsenal went down to 10 men because they played the majority of the game that way and they were able to shut out Liverpool even with 10 men in a very low block. But first, a quick look at their tactical setup with 10 men in possession. They went with five defenders with three central defenders and two wingbacks holding the full width of the field. This gave them good security at the back while, eight, while maintaining a way to circulate the ball from left to right. The single width was a good transition for them when they would lose possession because they could easily consolidate back into a back five. They would then go with Lakonga as the single pivot but then Lacazette accompanied by Martinelli and Saka higher up the field. So this would give them a diamond in midfield still looking to possess the ball into key areas, but being realistic about their situation and using single width and a back five to then look to progress higher up the field as quickly as possible and looking to exploit space. So by playing with three attackers, they would then able to narrow Liverpool's back four, allowing for the wide areas to be the space where they could then be used to release pressure. And then other than that, Liverpool played a high pressing system, which they usually do with Jota and Firmino playing together, blocking access to the single pivot, looking to press from out to in and winning the ball in the central corridor. Now Liverpool in possession was the dominant phase throughout the match, and they were typically attacking a mid to low block from Arsenal. So they built from the back with two center backs and Fabinho as a holding midfielder. But quite often, one of the two central defenders, either Matip or Van Dijk, would progress the ball via dribbling and look to pull out one of the three Arsenal midfielders. Now Arsenal went with a 5-3-1 in deeper areas. And a key tendency with their midfield where they played with Martinelli and Saka in the wider midfield positions and Lokonga in the center. And their connections horizontally were a little bit stretched, but this gave the freedom for the central defenders to pressure the Liverpool players between the lines, jumping into these spaces and forcing Liverpool to face their own goal and play negative after they enter these dangerous spaces. Now Liverpool typically overloaded these spaces between the line with at least three players actively looking to receive the ball and at least one player pinning. So they would create overloads in the half spaces to try and affect the Arsenal defensive shape and make it very difficult for the Arsenal team to shift. Now we have Lacazette playing as a lone striker and looking to play deeper than the holding midfielder to condense the space vertically for Arsenal and maintain a very compact structure. Now we can very much see a very compact back five for Arsenal, spanning not even the width of the entire penalty area. And now we see a very wide connection from the midfielders. So Saka playing more narrow because of the Possession of Van Dijk trying to force the ball into the wide area where it's more easily isolated and they can win possession back. Now between the lines we have a lot of overloads with Trent Alexander-Arnold coming inside from the fullback position. We have Jota and Firmino creating overload through the half space while Jordan Henderson would fan out wide and create width. Then throughout the team we'd have Van Dijk, Matip in the buildup and Fabinho playing as a single pivot. And on the weak side, we have Milner holding the center with Minamino as the overload on the left-hand half space. So this left the wide areas temporarily vacated by Arsenal players, which they could then easily shift into, defend from crossing positions, and play with a little bit higher line to then allow their goalkeeper more freedom and take a little bit of the pressure off when playing in this low block. Lacazette would then simply try and maintain vertical compactness and try to do his best by splitting the field and prevent circulation, although it was more about maintaining compactness vertically than it was isolating the ball. Now when Jordan Henderson would come into a narrow position, this gave the freedom for Trent Alexander-Arnold to occupy the wide area and create their typical back four. Fabinho would still play as a single pivot in this structure but it gave them a 2-3 build up shape and a 2-3 rest defense shape as well. Jordan Henderson now occupying the space between the lines would be part of the overload and 
work with the players partnered between the lines to try and create overloads and create advantageous positions in these dangerous areas. And then again, we see Arsenal using their 5-3-1 with a very narrow back five and a less narrow midfield three, allowing the defenders to jump into these positions and apply pressure from the back against the Liverpool attackers. Lacazette positioned on Fabinho, forcing the play to go less diagonal and play more neutral passes horizontally and into wide areas. Now the last picture again to show the Liverpool attacking structure against this 5-3-1 low block of Arsenal. We have our clear back four and as the game went on the central defenders became more aggressive with their jumping with the ball and the overloads between the lines became more desperate as they went more direct and tried to get more balls into the penalty area to try and make something happen. And Van Dijk would go higher up the field in the late stages of the match. But we'd have players running in behind for Liverpool trying to push the back five deeper as they were playing a very high line. But this would then create space between the lines trying to get these players on the half turn between the lines in dangerous areas. But although the horizontal connections for Arsenal were a bit greater than we would associate with a midfield three, they would still have access to players trying to affect them between their positioning and they would still be able to get there if a progressive pass was made from one of the first lines of Liverpool's build-up. And that's where we're going to wrap up the analysis, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.